can these um, these things be found in rainwater? Do they? Is there somewhere you can provide a test, or should we go to our um, extension offices, or where could we get some proof to stick a CD in their hands, stick some some kind of proof, and you know, testing proof? Excellent, because I was going to ask that question next. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed, Bonnie, on the website it says that um, tests could cost around $20 per element. Do you have any idea where people can send um, their tests of, I'm assuming that's rainwater, or, or is it ground soil? Which is it? Or both. <laughs> or both. Well, I, um, it, it could be either. I have to say once again that um, I, I went through this myself and found it to be not very effective. Um, there's a woman, actually Siobhan Sarisi, who's going to be speaking at our Sky Symposium on um, August 7th, um, has just done this with water samples in, um, um, yes, um, on Long Island. And they have found sometimes high aluminum, sometimes not high aluminum. Um, and I know she was testing for barium as well, which are the two that people most often first um, want to see what they can find out about. I have to say that I did this here where I live a couple of years ago, and I found the results um, it, with groundwater, I mean with water um, gathered from our little pond near the house. Um, if I tried to bring it to agencies who might be willing to take a look at the results, including high aluminum, they could they would just say things like, well, you don't know it was a farm. You don't know there was runoff. Maybe it's runoff. It was very hard for me um, to use that evidence in any way that moved anything forward. And where, not to say that, not to discourage anybody else from trying to do this, mind you, but for myself, I've now ended up um, taking glass slides, microscope slides. I put them out in, uh, it's, when it was snowing here in um, the winter, of course, um, although, you know, weather being what it could, it could snow any time probably, but holding out the glass slides and letting the snow come directly onto the slide and then putting a cover over it, putting the date on it, and then um, I had access, which may not be possible for other people, but maybe it would be, to um, an, a microscope at a college, and I got involved in working with the people who are doing Morgellons research because I am investigating what is falling directly out of the air onto a slide. And it seems to me that, that although, again, it's very hard to then introduce this, um, this information, I have photographs because I can do photographs of what I see and under the microscope. It's great. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. But then to bring it to anybody, it, it just seems really, really challenging to enter it into the, um, the community or the regional uh, discussion because it's poo-pooed. Even if people are, you know, I, the stuff that's falling out of the air where I live, which is, nor is northeast U.S., it's um, eastern New York State, um, I would sometimes, because fung fungus, fungal um, fibers are one of the things that the Morgellons researchers are talking about a lot. I wanted to see whether these things that I was seeing under the microscope were <clears throat> possibly Morgellon fibers, and I would send it to my friends who are <clears throat> like PhD botanists in the photographs, and I'd say, what is this? And they'd say, I don't know what that is. That doesn't look familiar. <clears throat> Excuse me, that might be this or that might be that. Um, it, I just don't feel like I ever really got any traction about it. Um, so I don't want to discourage anybody from following whatever whatever they feel called to do. I also have feel, and I, but, I, but I'm going to say one more thing about that, Many of us no longer trust the, the labs that we bring our water samples to. If you can find an independent um, uh, clinic or you know, a lab where you can bring your water samples where it's not under the, and I guess they're all under the jurisdiction of the state probably, uh, state government, but if you can find um, a researcher whom you feel you can trust who has not gotten the, and this sounds paranoid, but you know, it's kind of what happens after a while, we feel that actually some of these laboratories have been told to give a low or no um, uh, level of aluminum and barium when they send the results. 
I think that happened when I brought water, water results to um, a local laboratory. Um, and I just don't do it anymore because I couldn't find anybody who was interested in my results, and I don't trust the labs anymore. Um, so is that just discouraging to hear, or is it helpful in some way? Well, it, it, has anybody approached, like, you know, with the increases in asthma and everything, you know, like the American Lung Association, you know, I'm just sitting here trying to think of who else can start with what we breathe that, um, and like I say, you know, maybe from the labs giving the wrong readings when they say, oh, this is military reasons, which I understand is one of them, you know, that the Illumina makes their 3D radar work, you know, so, you know, whether it's, and then throwing it out to subcontractors, so, you know, oh, you know, well, this one's doing the seeding program, or when this one's doing the EPA, you know, global warming, and this one's doing, oh, military, and don't talk about that, and they just, right. you know, mix them all together. But, um, you know, is there a list of, I'm sure, you know, somewhere on one of these websites, anybody that's had success, you know, they can post those success stories, because, you know, if they've got it in California, and I say, okay, we've got it here in Virginia, is there anywhere that we're keeping up with, like, you know, just in the United States, a state-by-state -state list of where we're getting you know, a good a good person for you to contact who keeps track of um, it, uh, water and soil samples is Michael J. Murphy, who was our guest um, a few weeks ago, and you can find him at his website. He also has his email address email address on there. You can write him. He's a very nice man, and he tries to answer as much as he possibly can. Um, but he has an awful lot of information on reputable labs that um, could do testing and how to collect samples in your own area. His um, website, I believe, is truthmediaproductions.com. I think it's dot .com, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. What are they spraying CD? That's him, right? Exactly. Cool. What, what in the that. world are they spraying? Yeah, yeah, what in the world are they spraying? Yeah, and if yeah. you go over to his website, truthmediaproductions.com, um, like I said, you can get his email address there. You can at, um, write to him. He will write you back, um, and he should be, be able to give you some really good information on, on where to get stuff tested. Thank Joy, you I much. <laughs> yeah, but before you before you disappear, um, also if I may give you my email because if you connect with me by email and you let me know that you had spoken to me on the Rose and um, Joy Joy and Rose program, um, huh? then I w could give you a couple of other contacts too. I think might be helpful. Um, so if you wanted to, would you like my email address? I'm ready. Go. Okay. Um, it's B O N N E underscore fire F I R E at yahoo dot com. It's the name of the coalition, the Bonfire Coalition, but it's B O N N E underscore F I R E at yahoo. Thank so you just, for doing that, Bonnie. And just remind me. Well, I mean, I'm happy to to send you in the direction of all the people I know who are doing this kind of research, uh, rather than just give their information out over the air. So um, there are lots of people who are trying this approach, and you, I, can, you know, I'm, I know that they would be willing and interested in having a conversation with somebody in Virginia who is working on the same thing. So, yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, my granddaughter is suffering some asthma problems, and I'm looking up, and I mean, just here over this, this other weekend, we walked out, and it was almost like itchy. Yeah, I mean, it's just, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, but, I, um, I know the feeling. <laughs> and, and then, and then this, the, the look people give at you. You know, if, you, if we if we have a, a million problems to try to solve, but um, you know, this is just so obvious. It, you yep. know, uh, um, right. all the different things. So, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for calling in. Have a blessed evening. Bye -bye. All right. Bye bye. We have another caller. Um, this is acid. I call him our chat room bouncer. <laughs> he will uh, remove people that are out of line in chat. Acid, hello. Well, hello there. Did you have a question for our guest? No, I just uh, just got in. Um, my daughter, she turned five today, so we had a, we had a um, pretty decent birthday party and everything, so I'm just trying to relax and and um, the sunburn that I have, <laughs> it's torture. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if you don't have a, a question for our guest, then um, you can certainly hang out here and listen, but just mute your mic so that you don't run over people with your background noise, and we're happy to have you hang out and listen. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were enjoying your patty, too, there, Anthony. We were loving it. 
<laughs> I do have a question about your sunburn. I was talking with Andrew Bridgman um, just about a week ago or so, and he was saying with the reflective particles in our air that he actually got a sunburn in the shade, which amazed me. You weren't happened to be sitting in the shade, were you? <laughs> well, I was. I was the cook, so I was out ah. there in the sun. So I'm. I'm pretty toasty right now. <laughs> uh, how long were you out in the sun? I noticed when I was in Southern California with all the particulate in the air that normally I don't get sunburn very easily. I'd have to be out there quite a while, but I was only out working in the yard for maybe about 15, 20 minutes before I started feeling it burn me. And that was one of the things that I noticed with this reflective particulate is it seems to, uh, I get sunburn a lot more easily, plus the sun feels hotter on my skin, you know, than it used to. How long were you out there before you got sunburn? Well, I'm, I'm part Native American, so I, I know that real easy. <laughs> So I'll say about a half an hour. I start to start to, to tan pretty good, but right. you know, as I as the hours pass, I just got darker. I I was darker than the chicken. That's how bad it was. <laughs> oh no! Well, don't barbecue yourself next time, Acid. We need you to end, as our bouncer in the chat room. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I'm standing up right now because so, I have a leather um, a leather executive chair for my computer chair and. You know, without having a shirt on, <laughs> oh, man, it, it just sticks right to the leather. Oh, yeah, okay, and aloe vera. Just, <laughs> Go ahead, Rose. sort of thing that, that, you know, they're getting away with, with calling this global warming. Oh, oh no, you're getting sunburned now. I mean, how much of that is actually sunburn? How much of it is radiation, you know, from mm, other yeah. sources? I mean, the, all the mirrors in the sky and, and everything else. Um, you know, a comment like that is perfect for them to say, see, see, we're protecting you from the big bad sun. But, yeah. um, you know, it's nonsense. We, at the moment, we have to protect ourselves with, from their heinous technology. Yeah. Okay, well, Acid, if you'd, like I said, if you just want to hang out and mute your mic, you can feel free to hang out with us here if you'd like for a little while longer. Um, Bonnie, was there anything that you wanted to add about that? Have you noticed the increase in... in the heat, feeling the heat from the sun on your well, skin when you're out I'm, in it. I'm really interested in, in hearing other people talk about this because I would say for a few years um, when there, and, and I, was a, I was thinking it was when there was no haze, um, if I have direct sunlight, it really is really hot. And I've heard many people, I mean, in my small circle here, to say the same thing, the sun seems much hotter than it than we recall it being historically. I mean, I'm light skinned and I burn easily anyway. Right now, I'm having a flare up of my Lyme disease.